Hello and welcome to today's webinar on tips and tricks in MedTech 32. Today we'll be going over some tips that you can use in the patient search, inpatient register, task manager, the medication screen and charting. So to begin with, I'm going to go over the most common module that is used and that is your patient search. So the first and most important thing to remember when searching for a patient is that you always have to put their surname first followed by their first name. So their surname first followed by their first name. However, you might not know the patient by their surname and you might only know them on a first name basis. So to search for a patient, what you need to do is press the space bar to represent where their surname should have been followed by their first name. So my example that I'm going to use today is Janet. She is my patient that comes all the time and I don't know what her surname is. So in this instance, I will put a space to represent where her surname should have been followed by her name, Janet. So here we have Janet Denny. That's the patient that comes and sees us all the time. So that would be the patient that I would select. The next tip is known as a wildcard search. So this tip would typically be used in scenarios where you might not know how to spell the patient's name or you didn't quite capture their whole name. So an example could be a patient has left a message saying that their name is Kerry Baker. Now, when you're listening to this message, you might question, might question yourself and go, what did they say? Did they say Baker? Did they say Barker? I just didn't understand. But from what you can gather, the, the the surname starts with a B and ends with an R. So in this situation, you would put a B followed by an asterisk, so that's shift eight, and then an R. And now what the system is going to do is it's going to try and search for anybody beginning with a, their surname beginning with a B and ending with an R. So she said her name was Kerry. So over here, there you go, Kerry Baker, a Barker, sorry. So there, that's how you would go. It's looking for patients who you didn't quite capture their name, but kind of knew that it started with a letter and ended with another letter. You can then further confirm it by asking for their date of birth. So the next feature we're going to go over is linking registered patients to a family. So this little trick will allow you to link two separate registered patients into one family. A scenario could be that a mother and child have joined on separate occasions and now want to link their file to one another. So to do this, you need to get the main patient up on the palette. So my example today is going to be Charlene Abbott. There you go. And she wants to be linked with her son. So her chart number is 3203. Now I'm going to have to search for her son. Willie. 32. So what you need to remember is this number here. 3203. Then press enter. So as you can see, Willie Abbott's, and, uh, Willie Abbott's chart number is really different. So you need to open up his patient register, get rid of that chart number and replace it with 3303. Then you need to take away that extension because his mother is extension one, so he'll be extension two. And if somebody else has been added to the family, there'll be three, four, and so on and so forth. So once you've done that, all you do is press OK. And now you have linked both Charlene and Willie together into one family. You can double check that by going family and seeing that they are now linked. So the next enhancement occurs within your task manager. So that's module, task manager staff task or it could be patient task so if you receive a lot of tasks and you want to keep track of where you last were you can use the feature called bookmark as the name suggests it marks where you last were it bookmarks where you last were so you can um, leave the room and come back and not forget the last place that you were viewing your tasks in. 
So let's say, for example, I was viewing this task and then my colleague came in and asked me to quickly come and have a look at this patient. I would highlight there the task and use the bookmark option by right clicking. And now it is bookmarked by the gray line. Please note that this bookmark will only retain if the module is left open. If you close the task manager and reopen it, the bookmark will disappear. So if I bookmarked it and then closed it and then came back and went into the task manager, that bookmark is gone. So you have to leave the module open for it to retain. The next tip and tricks occurs within the medication module. So a lot of users will probably already know this. This is mostly for users who are new to medtech. So when prescribing medications, you can switch from a granular to non-granular whilst in the screen. So I'll give you an example. So I'm going to depend it all. And if you want to give a frequency and add certain directions, what you need to do is just press this little icon over here and it will switch you from granular to non-granular. So now you can put your frequency, so you can say every four hours, your dosage. As well as the period. If you want to actually add more detail in this directions tab, you'll need to switch back to the granular by clicking that button over there again. And now you can add instructions such as before bed or with food if you wanted to. While in this tab, if you know that you are prescribing this and giving it to the patient in clinic, you can tick this administered in clinic tab. If you do not have this option in your patient medication screen, you need to go under settings and location and click under the clinical tab and there it will have enable administered in clinic. You would need to have system admin rights to do this however. So when you put a tick in that box, a new tab will appear. So this will allow you to capture information such as the batch number, its expiry, the route, as well as the provider. So the doctor is administering it, but the person actually giving it to them can be captured there too. So this could be the nurse. So I'd really recommend using this option when, especially for standing orders. So the next um, tip that we'll go over is macros. So if you use your Outbox documents and in particular lab referrals or radiology, this will be particularly useful for you. So when you go and select the certain tests you want, you have the ability to right click and these are preset services. So if there are particular services that you have to have to diagnose you with jaundice or rheumatic fever, you can set it up in the back end so that you don't have to go through all of these tabs to find the particular service you're looking at. All you have to do is right click and maybe tick jaundice this patient needs to be confirmed for jaundice and under the main tab you'll see all of the services needing to confirm for jaundice. So you, you can set this up by going into the setup, inbox, outbox and macro. So all you got to do is press the new button, you put in your code, your description, and then you choose your folder. So this is normally under the laboratory or radiology and under the services you must go you can go ahead and add your services so if I click on the jaundice for example you'll be able to see what I mean the next um, tip that I'll be giving you is under the screening module so I'll just change it to see if we have another patient who has some screenings Okay. If we wanted to chart blood pressure, for example, we could 
click on the particular screening that you'd want and click the charting button. You'll get a little chart screen, however we're visual creatures and we are stimulated by visual responses. So if you click that chart button again, you'll get a graph and that way the patient can see if they're doing better or worse. It looks better than having numbers put in front of them. So you can actually go ahead and print this graph off for the patient's reference. Lastly, if you want to avoid calling our support line, we have another great substitute available and that's the chat option or the contact support. So we have a dedicated um, team looking after the chat room where users can ask questions regarding their respected PMSs, so whether you're a MedTech 32 customer or Evolution. However, in the actual PMS system itself, we have a contact support option which allows you to send queries directly to a support agent from the PMS itself. They will review your query and contact you. So if you needed to do that, all you need to go is under the help menu and contact support and this little box will pop up and you have the option of selecting what type of category it is. Is it a training request support, license, sales, manage my health and then you can type in a little message if you want in the square. The details will pre-populate based on your location, who you are, the practice as well as the version you're using because this is really vital when we're looking at your queries. Um, we need to know what version you're on. So that information will retain from the PMS system and be sent to our team. So this concludes the end of the webinar. Thank you all for joining. I hope you um, learned a few tips and trips from the patient search or linking your family or, or using a macro, for example. Um, if you have any questions, please contact the training team. Thank you all again.